Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk 105. The previous episode featured Knights of the Grey Cloaks attacking a monastery, but being thwarted by the party. Many of the aesthetics had been put to the sword and the party faced off with their leader after Lady Irena's web spell put two others out of commission. As the knight leader sneered at the party, the final battle begins. Ladies, I'll take it easy on you until we are done, snarked the knight as he winked and blew a kiss to Sister Elaine. Okay, big man, let's see what you've got, looking at Fargus. He lunged towards the ranger, who sidestepped and spun over to Cabe, who was taken off guard. The Grey Cloak smashed the bard in the face with the pommel of a sword, knocking Cabe off balance and had blood squirt from an open wound in the mouth. A slashing move followed and caught Lady Irena across the top of her leg. As blood gushed, she too lost her balance and fell over as well. Sister Elaine immediately stepped forward and smashed the unusual mace against the man's armor with a loud smack. She and Bolger, the sailor, anxiously awaited another lightning strike, but were crestfallen when it didn't come. Fargus was out of position from the cleric's move and moved to one side. As Elaine stared at a weapon, wondering why it didn't have the same effect, the knight landed an uppercut to her jaw, knocking her across the room into some chairs. Anger flushed on the face of both Fargus and Bolger, and each took a step back. The knight laughed as his cohorts began to cheer and jeer the party as they were still entangled and unable to assist in the fight. The lead knights insulted both males, asking them if they were going to run away to their mommies, but his tune quickly changed as both heroes grabbed a long bench and charged towards the knight. Taken off guard at the action, he raised his blade to strike at Bolger, but was caught in the midriff by the bench, knocking him backwards against the altar. The collision jostled the body of the dead monk, who rolled off the table and onto the knight, spraying him with the little blood left in his body. Fargus tossed the bench, striking one of the trapped men in the mouth, causing the bench to become stuck in the webs as well. A blade came through the dead monk and was aimed at Fargus's knee. The ranger saw the attack coming and was able to sidestep it by dropping his own blade upon the outstretched arm, severing it just below the wrist. The Grey Cloak Knight screamed in pain as blood spurted out from the grievous wound. Bolger's club headed the, the howling as it landed squarely into the knight's face, breaking his nose and knocking him out cold. With blood pouring out of the detached limb, Fargus reached over to a torch in a pillar and set the stump on fire, cauterizing the wound. The knight briefly regained consciousness, but passed out again quickly from the pain. The pair of trap knights shut up as they quickly realized that they were in a fair bit of trouble. Sister Elaine, Cabe, and Lady Irena were all helped to their feet, and the cleric began to tend to everyone's wounds. Fargus and Bolger gingerly bound the hands of the trap knights, which resulted in one of them being struck in the head as he tried to escape. Everyone was healed and looked over their three prisoners, mulling over their options. A loud clatter was heard and the chapel quickly filled with ten monks brandishing farm implements. Stains on their robes indicated that the group had just been out in the fields at the time of the attack. The monks observed the carnage and demanded the party lower their weapons. Sister Elaine stepped forward and bowed deeply to the men before introducing herself to them. She quickly explained that the knights, and not the adventurers, were responsible for the issue. She quickly outlined the information from the roadhouse and their subsequent arrival. The monks looked to the bound prisoners and their lack of aggressive action from the party and surmised that Sister Elaine was probably telling them the truth. The men lowered their makeshift weapons and two ran over to the monk on the floor. Abbot Tinsel! exclaimed one of the monks and the others quickly gathered around the corpse and openly wept. The party moved to the back of the room after dragging the prisoners away 
and watched from a distance. The group left the monks to grieve in silence until one of the knights, who had been trapped in the web, yelled out to them, Serves you right, you pious ass. You should have given us what we wanted. Cabe's retort was a blasting set of punches to the man's face, and he had to be dragged off the individual by Sister Elaine, Fargus, and Bolger. The severe beating had knocked the man out, as well as fractured a few teeth. The third knight looked on in horror at the vicious onslaught and opted to keep his mouth shut. The bard broke free of the other's grip and stormed out of the building. While Lady Irena started to follow, Fargus pointed out the cave should be given a little time to cool off, and she stopped. Several of the monks tearfully gathered up the body of their deceased leader and moved him out of the chapel while another pair began to clean up the spilled blood. A third approached the party and thanked them for their service. We observed the attempted fire and would have destroyed centuries of manuscripts and we thank you for your service, stated an older monk. The group inquired as to what the gray cloaks were seeking, but the man could not give an answer. Only our abbot dealt with these rogue knights before. I do not have enough information to explain what it was they sought, was the answer given. An inquiry as to what the archive possess only further complicated the matter. The party learned that the monks were only transcribing historical texts and non-magical documentation. Bulger left the room to check on Cabe, who was dragging bodies into a pile to apparently set them on fire. Bulger helped gather the deceased knights and confirmed the captured ones were still at bay. After several minutes, the rest of the group joined the pair and finished building a funeral pyre. With the captured men watching and jeering the party, the group came together to decide what to do with the rest of the rogue knights. <sighs> you know, if we let them go, they'll come after us as soon as they can and probably kill these monks, pointed out Cabe. Are we close enough to getting a ship to be able to leave that unmolested and let these monks risk their lives? His query was directed at Bolger, who thought for a moment before shaking his head side to side. I vote we slit their throats and be done with it. And he pointed to the bard. Arguments were made and there were no reasonable opposition to the treatment of the murderers. The individuals were certainly murderers and a major nuisance. Despite arguments for our leniency by Sister Elaine and the still living knights, not even she could refute the problem of leaving them alive would cause. Cave volunteered to be the executioner as the others seemed hesitant. Bolger agreed to the resolution and offered to help. The others stood by in support of their associates as the sentence of death was given to the Grey Cloaks. Cave was declared a half-breed and unworthy to carry out the sentence by one of the men. The response was a fast slicing of the man's throat who fell over in the dirt. The rest of the Grey Cloaks began to beg for their lives, but neither Bolger nor Cabe was in a mood to bargain. One by one, each of the Grey Cloaks was put to the sword and added to the pile. Their valuables were collected and turned over to the monks as the group rode away in silence as the sun began to sink. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.